Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Dearborn Partner webinar. Uh, today's topic is how to make the most of pre-licensing students for returning education. Uh, it's no secret that um, uh, today's market is different than it was five years ago. It's different than it was three years ago. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about uh, maximizing the market that you're in. And today I have two very important people with us. Uh, if you've been here before, you may have seen uh, Sarah Scobie, who is our Senior Product Marketing Manager for Real Estate at Kaplan. Sarah, thank you for being here. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hi. And uh, and then, of course, Kate Papke. If you are an RE Campus partner, uh, you have probably talked to Kate at some point. Uh, Kate is our senior pro, uh, client success manager, and all the uh, client success managers uh, report up through Kate. Kate, thank you for being here. Thank you. Excited. All right. Uh, well, let's do this. Um, we're going to jump right in. This is a topic that I, I could uh, personally uh, spend uh, all day talking on. We're not going to have that much time. We're going to have 30 minutes. We're going to hit the high points. And Sarah's going to move fast, and Kate is going to move fast. I'm going to move fast. This is being recorded. You're going to be able to get a copy of this probably next week, and uh, it'll be out for you. You can watch it again. You can share it with your teams. You can do all that sort of stuff. Um, and so we're going to hit these topics pretty fast because there's a lot of ground to cover. And I know a lot of people are looking for where is the business. So let's go ahead and jump forward. All right. Uh, how to make the most pre-licensing students for returning education. This was a part of the marketing content that we covered. You know. Uh, uh, in this webinar, one thing I will let you know, we are going to review uh, uh, available RE Campus reporting. If you are not an RE Campus partner and you want to be by the end of this, you're going to want to connect with uh, sales ops at uh, uh, Dearborn.com. Uh, also, Chris Robinson is moderating this um, webinar right now. Chris is a uh, national account manager and it can easily handle your questions also. So use your chat box. Uh, you can use it as a conversation with everybody, and you can also use it to connect with, with the Dearborn staff that are here today. All right. First off, I want to ask a poll question. We do this on almost every webinar, but I want to know who's here uh, because it's a different crew every time. I kind of think I know who's going to be here, and but Sarah and Kate want to kind of tailor how they cover the information depending on who's here. So we make sure we get everybody covered, okay? Uh, let's do this. I'm going to launch this. The first Polling question is, what role do you fill at your school? All right, everybody, take a shot at this. We'll be really quick. Take a shot at this. What role do you fill in your school? Hey, I'm an instructor. Please go ahead and answer. All anonymous. All these polls are anonymous. Nobody's going to see uh, anything. I'll share the results. We always share the results with everybody so you kind of know who else is on the, the webinar. Uh, all right, so we got administrator. I'm an instructor. I'm an administrator. I'm a coordinator director. I'm... I own the school. This is my joint. And you can answer multiple times too, guys. You can answer multiple answers. I put it down. So if you do two roles, put in two roles. That's okay. We want to know. Um, sometimes that people don't even have a school yet, but they're thinking about it. We've been working with them and we invite them to these webinars. And so if you're one of those people, great. Go ahead and answer it. Want to know where we're at. All right, we'll give it another. If you're on your cell phone or a tablet, you may need to swipe a screen to get to the polling question, but there should be a polling question up and you just type right on it. So uh, Arlene, I know you went into the chat box. Maybe you're on your, your cell phone. That's fine. But uh, love it if you could use the polling uh, questions that are on screen for you. Go ahead and just tap in the box where the answer is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share the answers uh, or the results with everybody. Okay. We've ended the poll. We're sharing the results. Look at that. I got 33% of the people here are instructors. Cool. I love it. 17% uh, are administrators. 58%. Uh, so, you know, uh, over 50% of the people are a coordinator or director, and we have about 42% of the people uh, actually own the school. So we got nearly half and over half are coordinators or, or owners. And so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be good. We don't have anybody who doesn't own a school yet. Uh, so uh, we can kind of stay away from those topics too. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to jump right in. First off, where are all the fish, right? So we've been out fishing. And if you guys <laughs> remember, since about, for, for those of you who've been in the business, I see some names of people who are in here. Some of you I know have been around a long time. Uh, you've been in long enough. You, you've been through the first crisis, which was 2006, 7, 8, 9, right? The, the, the big Great Recession, the financial meltdown, the mortgage crisis, all that sort of stuff. And then around 2011, 2012, we saw the real estate education market come back. Actually, we saw the real estate market come back, if you guys remember that. And we saw 
uh, the business pickup, and we saw licensing pickup, and we saw all these all these businesses start to pick up, and and we started to recover numbers of people who had fallen out during the crisis. And it kind of ran all the way up nice and steady all the way up until about 2019, all of a sudden 2020, everything changed. And once again, we had another pandemic rush. And, and I think just about everybody here who was in business saw it. All boats in the harbor lifted when the tide came up. And we all uh, really kind of, if you were in the right spot at the right time, you had the right product, which most of our partners did, you were able to take advantage of the all boats in the harbor rising. And then some of you even carved out bigger market share when it happened. So the pandemic driven, it was licensing business. That's what the fish were. We were going and we were chasing licensing education. Unemployment went up and people came in. Well, what's happened to that market? It's it's changed, right? I mean, it's softening. and 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 that's all through like 2022 started to see some of it in the spring of 2022 and it maybe even at the end of 2021 it started to soften but definitely all year in 2022 enrollments licensing enrollments down down 15 16 18 20 percent across the country depending on where you were and that's part of the marketplace you know and then you know uh, especially all of a sudden interest rates start to go up and and the market starts to get this little turn and so where's your business coming from now what are we looking for? Are you fishing in the right spot? The fish have all moved. And 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 where do you got to be to make money now in education? Because uh, a lot of people, hopefully you put a war chest aside, you got some money banked, and now it's about how are you going to capitalize on everything you've done during that pandemic? How are you going to leverage that into business today? And uh, especially knowing that licensing enrollments has softened. What are you going to do? Maybe some of you have already seen it. Some of you have already seen a change and, and a thing. And so Sarah and Kate are here today to help us understand how to find those people, to find that fish. Where are we at? How can you do it and spend very little money and use some of the tools we already have, right? And they're going to walk us through that really quickly. And then we're going to talk about a couple maybe off the board things that we can do. So by the end of this uh, presentation today, you're going to have some pretty solid strategies that are going to let you go down a road to be able to find where the fish are. Because I think we're going to be able to identify where the fish are today. In fact, that gets us to our next poll question. So Sarah, Kate, I know I've been rambling a little bit, but I, I, we wanted to ask this one question. We're all interested in this question right here. Once again, this is anonymous, but we're going to do another poll question. What areas are you you educators, you owners, your directors, you instructors, what areas are you seeing an increase in activity, right, since maybe this time last year? Where are, are, are there any? Maybe there's not. And, and once again, I'm going to pull up the poll question, and you can answer more than one uh, question, all right? So, sorry, one answer. You can answer more than one answer. So what areas are you seeing an increase in activity? Everybody take a shot at this. Put your answers in. We got a lot of participants here. We should see a lot of answers rolling in. Where are you seeing an increase in activity? Are you seeing an increase in activity in pre-licensing? Is it in exam prep? Um, is it in post-licensing, right? Like, hey, I got all the education, uh, my licensing, I'm all done, but now I got to come and get my post-licensing. I know, I know not all states have post-licensing, but for those of you who do, are you seeing it there? Continuing education. Are you seeing an upswing in continuing education? What about professional development and coaching? Are you looking at other of the things other than regulated education? And then finally, license upgrade. All right, I got my initial license level. A lot of states, it's salesperson and they want to become a broker. Or it's a broker becoming a managing broker, an associate broker becoming a broker in charge, whatever it is. That's what license upgrade is. Where are you seeing the activity increase? Look at that. All right, we got the answers in. I'm going to finish this in five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to share this result. Look at this. I think this is interesting. I got 41% are saying they're seeing an increase in pre-licensing area of activity. That's interesting. That's Can interesting. Do it when I share. It's not showing. Oh, is it not sharing? Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I thought I'd hit the button. It didn't go. I, I was looking at my own results. All right. So, so here we go. Everybody, look at this. Pre-licensing, 41% of you are saying, I'm seeing some increased activity there. That's fantastic. But what we're seeing across the country, I can tell you, 
probably really depends locally where you're at, but uh, across the country, we're seeing that that pretty pretty significant softening, you know, 18 to 20 percent, somewhere in there, maybe 22 percent in some markets, even more. Um, exam prep, 53 percent. So a lot of people got their education, but they can't they can't get by the test. They can't get through the exam. Awesome. Post licensing, 12, 12 percent. Like I said, not everybody has post-licensing requirements. Uh, continuing education, 41%, matching the pre-licensing. Professional development coaching, 24%. And then license upgrade, 18%. Wow, that's interesting. I don't know. Uh, well, let's do this. We're going to jump into it because we have some thoughts. And once again, we're always very open about sharing what we're seeing. And, and hopefully that helps you kind of know uh, what to do in this market where to go, where are the fish? Because here's the one thing, if you're going across the lake and you've got that radar, you know, that's crazy what these radar can see now, right? It's, it's into the water and it can literally show you a picture of a fish when you go over in your boat and you stop and you know, that's where the fish are. We're gonna give up some secrets today that show this is where we know fish are. And, and if you fish there, you, you've got an opportunity to catch them. Because what happens in this market is there may not be fish in uh, where they, youth, they used to be, even during the pandemic, those fish have moved. And so how do you move your business without spending a lot of money, but still getting a big return for your time and effort? All right, let's go. Uh, and this is the part where I basically take a backseat because Sarah and Kate are going to drive this one. So first and foremost, um, uh, well, let me do this. Um, I'm going to share what, what we think, what we saw, because I, I didn't do that yet. Um, and that is for for where we see fish uh, across the country and what, what we look to target and what we look to, to spend our time and effort on is, is two things. One is anybody we know who needs education. And when I mean need, this is going to look really bad, but people who who literally have to get it done or they're not in the business anymore. And, and you can all, you, you all know what I'm talking about there, right? Continuing education. Continuing education is a place where everybody who's got a license has to do it. And I know we compete for it. I know we look for it. But you also have a bunch of brand new, fresh people in who you put through licensing who now need continuing education for maybe the first time. Maybe, may, maybe, maybe it's their second time, but they've never done it before. They don't know the experience. Are you reaching them? Are you getting to them? And then for those of you who are in post-licensing markets, that's a no-brainer. You know these people. They've come to you for pre-licensing. They've taken all the education from you. You've got their email addresses, their home addresses. This is where you're going to want, or we do, I know that. We concentrate on those people to bring them back as much and fast and hard as possible because we know who they are. And generally, they made it through the education and they like you already. So what are you doing to keep them? And so let's do this. With that said, how are you going to reach them? What tools are available to you? And, and once again, if you have thoughts or comments about what I said, go ahead and throw it in the chat. And uh, I'll be watching that also. And we can be answering some questions. And some of you got a lot of experience. If you're seeing something different in your marketplace, but I'm going to go ahead and have Sarah and Kate kind of walk us through this now as to how you can maximize some of the tools available and then some of the marketing strategies that, of, of how you actually reach those people, how you stay in front of them. All right. So let's go ahead, Kate and um, uh, uh, Sarah. Yep. Sounds good. Are you guys able to see my screen with the report in the portal? Can, can you see it? Let's see here. No, I think Toby, you may need to stop sharing. Do I need to stop sharing? So let's do this. I will stop sharing. There we go. Now we can see it. Okay, here. perfect. Okay. So um those of you that have the RE campus uh know you should know these completion transaction enrollment reports. Completion report is a great way to see students that are eligible for that next level of education, whether it be um continuing education or exam prep potentially or even um, professional development. So what we did is we pulled the completion report over here on the left-hand side. I kept it open just because this is a smaller demo portal. Um, and then it shows me these students that are completed. So not all of them have completed all their courses. This one has one pending, uh, but we wanna see a little bit more. So we're gonna export this into Excel. 
Uh, I have this already open. And then personally, I do the enable editing. I like to delete the top two rows. And then yours is probably gonna look a lot more vast. Um, this is a demo, so there aren't a lot of completions on it, but you'll have a line for each completion. So this student has taken two courses. Um, in some states, you have three courses. In Minnesota, you have three courses. So you're gonna see a completion for each licensing course or continuing education. So that kind of tells you what type of student you're reaching out to. Um, if they show completed, you know that that might be a really good student to market to for um, the next step, whether it be continuing education, exam prep, you know, a point of contact for that. So, so then quick, I'm going to, oh, yeah, go ahead. Quick question, Kate. So, so here's what we're doing. We're, we're using the system, RE Campus, reports that are already available, and this was the completion report. So yep, the completion report. So I'm a, I'm a school operator and, and, and we do this guys all the time. So uh, uh, you go in, everybody who's completed, understand what their timeline is and what the likelihood is of them going on, taking their state licensing exam, passing their state licensing exam, going on to get licensed. We all know there's a little bit of a drop off. If you've been in this long enough, you know that some people take the course and never go take the state licensing exam. Some people take the state licensing exam, they pass it, they fail it, whatever. But but uh, generally, uh, uh, nearly everybody goes on to get their license after they pass the state licensing exam, but not everybody. And so there's this little bit of degradation and fall off, right? So you're going to want to have all the pieces possible. And 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 then you've, you've got their information. You've already got their email address. You've already got their home address. You've already got all this information in the system for you to be able to connect with them, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, one other trick is uh, how some states are really good at uh, identifying who actually is licensed and they make those lists available to people. Uh, they make it available to private citizens and to businesses where you can buy a state licensee list and it'll actually tell you who's been licensed in the last year. And you can even compare that list with what you're finding in the completion report to be able to target people who you know are going to, you know, their fish, your boat just went over them and the radar shows a little picture of a fish stop here and fish here. Right. Cool. All right. So keep, keep rolling. I just want to make sure we yeah, No, you're good. Somewhere. You're good. And so it does tell you kind of their completion date. And, and as Toby, Toby pointed out, if you get a list from the state and you show that they completed, but they haven't maybe gotten their state licensing, maybe exam prep is a perfect opportunity to reach out to them and say, Hey, I see you passed, but you haven't gotten into that licensing quite yet, do you need some help? Perfect opportunity. You have this list, you have their information. And within the portal, you can see all the data of that student. So we click on it, it tells us the student information and you can go from there. So I'm gonna pass it over to Sarah so she can talk about what you would do. And then there is a video that we have created for a demo for admins that's gonna be shared here. If you want to see details on how to pull a completion report or even an enrollment report, it's on the 12 minute mark and around the 15 minute point nine for enrollment. So just to be aware of that, I'm going to stop sharing and present. Okay, thank you, Kate. So yeah, as Kate and Toby mentioned, you know, now you have this list of people that completed, whether you got it from your RE Campus platform, another platform, or even the state, what are some channels you could consider to continue to reach out to that audience? So I think a no brainer is email marketing, right? It's pretty low lift expense wise, doesn't take a, cre a lot of creative bandwidth. Um, so just make sense, uh, just make sure when you're entering into email marketing, you're sending what's going to make sense for your audience. Um, you know, we talked a lot about exam prep. I know a lot of you said that exam prep is um, what you're seeing a lot of students come for right now. Um, so that's a perfect example. Um, you know, think about also how you're going to tailor that message. Um, you know, someone may have tried and failed the test. And so you want to be kind of considerate of that and kind of maybe have a softer approach. Um, so just, you know, think through what's going to make sense for your audience and be um, conscious of, you know, where they're at in their journey. So you're thinking exam prep. If you're a post-licensing state, definitely reach out there. Um, continue education, as Toby already mentioned. And then professional development. That's always a good opportunity if that's something that you offer at your school, um, you know, because students coming into this industry, it's not always easy to get going and get jumping off. Um, and so professional development is a good opportunity to reach out to those students as well. Quick, quick question, Sarah. 
because a lot of times, you, I mean, this is great because you you understand who the people are. You've already got their information. You 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 can reach them if you have verified that they are now a fish. That they've gone on, they've gotten their license, and and now they are a fish. How are you going to target them? Um, and 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 you might have the right message. Hey, I, I know you need it. I know you need post licensing. Come and get the post licensing. Or I know you need CE. As a matter of fact, you're a return customer. Here's a special deal I want to give for you as a return customer. Maybe there's a discount involved. Maybe there's a, some sort of yep. you know refer a friend. Uh, you know some something involved with that um, uh, that actually triggers men. But almost as importantly, can you talk about timing of the message? at all. Yeah, so I think there's a couple different opportunities and that's a good segue into setting up automation. So you can do one off emails, you can just kind of test that's a good way to test the timing of what's going to be appropriate it could be based upon um, a date of a deadline within your state if that's relevant for CE or post licensing waiting X amount of weeks months before you send that email. So you can try to send one off emails to test in that timing, but then consider automations as well. Some people call these drip campaigns nurture campaigns, they have a ton of different names. Um, these are good to set up to kind of set it up and let it run. And then you can continually pull those completions, feed them into your automation, let the emails run. Um, and it's it, it kind of takes some of that uh, work, especially if you uh, have resource constraints as well on sending those regular emails. That's also a good idea. Um, if you are going to run, go ahead, Toby. You know, as you say, we know a ton of one person offices that do yeah. utilize this like crazy. And they act like an office of 10 people because they're really smart about, and there's a lot of automation software uh, subscriptions and, and products out there that you can get, right? And we don't really, yep. we don't, we're not here to recommend any one, but we're just here to say that concept makes can make a one person office act like a seven or 10 person office, right? Yep. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely something to, to test into, but just don't forget after they're done through the automation, don't send them back through the automation again, mm -hmm. kind of consider some one off emails after that for that continuing education. That'll also allow you to maybe test your creative, um, maybe call out something happening in the industry or a discount if you have that available as well. Um, you know, and then think about your leads too. If you do have maybe a content um, marketing opportunity where you're gathering leads that are very top of funnel automations that's why they're called nurture campaigns sometimes they're really great for those leads because you can just kind of funnel them in there feed them some content however you want to set up your automation to get them to maybe a licensing student and then continue to have that contact beyond there got it excellent and then I thought I'd pull in some best practices just to, um, you know, kind of give you some some things to think about if you're um, going to consider some of these uh, channels. Um, hopefully email if you're already in email. None of these are big surprises, but obviously the subject line is the most important part of any email. Um, if that's not compelling, it doesn't matter what's inside the email because they don't they're not going to know because they didn't open it. Um, don't forget about the preview text. That's the little text that shows up in your inbox right next to the subject line. That's becoming a little more important because it aids that subject line and supports it um, to get to that open. Always make sure you're adhering to canned spam rules. Always have opt-outs. Make sure you're suppressing against those opt-outs so you don't get in trouble. Um, always keep your main message above um, the fold. Um, so the minute someone opens your email, they know exactly what you want them to do and where they need to click. Less is more. Don't make your email super content heavy. Um, the goal is to get them to click off the email to either your website or your portal or however you're um, going to serve them the additional information. And that's a hard lesson. I mean, I, I, I get it. That's a hard lesson to learn. We, 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 we fall into that trap big, long email. Some of you who get emails from us from Dearborn, you're like, oh my God, look at the length. Yep. Please, if you see a long email from Dearborn, read it because a lot of time and effort has gone into it to make it as short as possible. But there's a lot of, but it's different when somebody's kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're marketing to you. They're sending you emails. You've got to hit it fast. And I think the key you said there, Sarah, you really just want them to click out of that email to go to where they need it. Don't give them all the, get them enough to get them to go to somewhere. Right. I yeah. mean, 
That's yeah, and a, and a B2C, when you're speaking to a student, is very different from a B2B perspective as well. So keep that in mind. I mean, students especially, we all have short attention spans, but students especially, the prospects have very short attention spans. So just get them to their endpoint as quickly as possible. Um, focus on the quality of your email and the quantity. More, e more emails does not mean that you're going to get more enrollments. It means that you're going to get more opt-outs. Um, and always A-B test your creative. Uh, there's always something you can test, whether it's just a, something as simple as a subject line or a call to action. It could be the call to action copy, the button color. I mean, um, that can make a huge difference in your email. So always test something. Don't test everything. Concentrate on testing one or two opportunities for your emails. Got it. Um, and let's talk about digital marketing. So this is a little bit more of a lift, a little bit more of an expense as well. Um, I'm going to... Yes, <laughs> um, I'm going to approach it from two two different areas. Um, one is not creepy at all, and one is a little more creepy. So we're going to start with a little less creepy one. Um, essentially, you can take that completion report, you can feed it into a search engine platform or a social media platform, and um, target display ads just to that audience. Um, if uh, that platform has um, a profile that matches that email address, you can feed a continuing ed education banner ad, for instance, to that particular pre-licensing student you know that has completed. Um, so that's a huge opportunity just to hit them um, where we are all at on the internet, on our social um, social platforms um, to, to, to just keep your brand top of mind. The other option um, to consider, which is kind of the little more creepy one, is to build a lookalike list. Um, you can take those completions, um, you know, social media platforms, they'll have, um, they'll match that profile of that email address with someone who has a similar profile, similar search history, um, how they search throughout the internet, things like that. And you can uh, reach out to new prospects with display ads um, via that avenue. Just keep in mind that your message needs to be very different if you're doing a lookalike list than if you're just retargeting to your pre-licensing students that you know are already uh, familiar with your brand. Got it. It's just a little creepy. It it's is a little creepy. It's a little creepy, but effective. It so, is. It is. Yeah. Um, when you are thinking about uh, entering into display ads and retargeting, just some best practices here. Obviously, know your audience, as I said. Make sure you're serving them the right ad that's going to make sense for them. Um, make sure your ads are engaging. Your, your brand, your school name, your logo should be the first thing that they see, followed by the call to action of what you want them to do. Again, the purpose is to get them to click to your website, your portal, to, to whatever, to learn more um, and be creative as well. Um, the last thing I will say here is avoid ad fatigue is pretty important. Um, I know there's nothing more annoying than when I'm scrolling through a social media feed and I see the same ad for months and months and months. Um, I will eventually just ignore it or I will flag it as being repetitive so it stops showing. Um, and I think that's likely what most people do. <laughs> um, so consider setting a frequency limit on the number of times an ad is shown to somebody within a certain amount of time um, or just rotate your creative regularly maybe every couple months, every quarter, um, just to keep it fresh. Excellent. Um, and then direct mail marketing. Um, this one is a little more. It, it obviously involves an expense. Um, but, you know, you have your pre-licensing completions or that state licensee list um, that Toby mentioned. That licensee list might not have an email address. So there's not a whole lot you can do with it from a digital perspective uh, without that email, right? So um, think about, you know, more regional mailings. You're also kind of schools within your state um, that might not be quite as big, big of an expense. Um, think about catalogs of what you offer. Um, letters um, are letters are okay, but you have to make sure you're doing something creative with the envelope to get somebody to open it. Um, postcards are really good as well because you can get creative. It's not as cost, um, it's a little more cost effective. And um, if someone's flipping through their mail, it might be a little more eye catching there and, as and, well. And once again, timing, right? So if I'm doing yep. continuing education uh, or it's post licensing. Uh, timing is key. You can send it out a year before they need it, before their deadline. And and here's what I find, everybody. So, so you know, 20 years in this business, you have about 10%, 8 to 10% of the population are what I call early adopters. Soon as the, the CE course is available that they need, 
they're on it. They're not waiting. They're not like me waiting till, you know, a month before or two weeks before, right? Which is where most of us range in. Uh, we do it just in time. Uh, and may have even been there at the midnight hour, but there's a, there's a percentage who go early. And if you, if you want to fish for them, go early. But, but if you are sending something that costs money, uh, you're going to want to pile that into that area where the most people are starting to look for, oh my gosh, I got to get my, I got to get my post licensing. I got to get my CE done. You know, I really should be taking some coaching here, whatever it is. And so timing wise, Sarah, what's a kind of little rule of thumb for timing that you might suggest? Um, it, it depends on how long the course is going to take. If they can complete a course in a day, send it maybe a month at most. If it's going to take them a couple of weeks to complete, send a couple of months before. Um, the closer you can get to when they need to complete the course, the better. Um, like like you said, Toby, you're not, you don't want to send something nine months ahead of some sort of deadline or when they need to to take that course, um, or it's just going to end up in the recycling and they're not right. even going to come I'm back and do it. it. If I got to take a 30 hour course, you're not going to send it uh, the week of when it's due, right? So you're going to have to get there a month ahead of time, the appropriate amount of time for them to complete the course. And this is really the trick about direct mail marketing. There was a time when we said you needed to send three direct mail marketing pieces. It's expensive. Maybe you send one, you hit the sweet spot, and hopefully you're doing emailing. And that's the beauty of emailing is you can hit it a little bit earlier and you can run a little later. But this is specifically for direct mail marketing we're talking about. Mm -hmm. here. Okay. Yeah, direct mail is also good just to, to keep your school top of mind um, or, or let people get familiar with your brand and your school, especially that state licensee list. If they do, if they already haven't come through your school for, they don't for know their who courses, you are. they don't know who you are. Um, and like Toby said, just be mindful of costs. I mean, we all know paper costs are rising, postage is rising. So you just need to be um, definitely mindful of that. And just overall rule of thumb, um, keep it simple, but be creative. You want something that's going to be really eye catching when they're weeding yeah. through all the other mail. so once again if, if i'm in a state that posts uh uh the the address of all new licensees who need post licensing i might look at that list i might spend the money to buy that list if your state charges because i know exactly how to reach you i know exactly the message i might send to you that's going to differentiate me from everybody else you may take that and maybe you want to try it maybe you just want to experiment and see pick a zip code send it out see what happens um but that's that's what we do. We 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 target uh, for direct mail marketing. Yeah, it's it's just another tool in your toolkit. You know, along um, with all the other channels, you have to make sure you're hitting them however you can. Okay, and I think we'll turn it back to Kate, who's going to go over the enrollment report real quick. Yep, and I'll just share it real quick. I know we're a little over, but um, enrollment reports are something that you can pull. Um, so it's just on your left hand side. It did this is RE Campus like, again. So everybody, yep. this is for RE Campus. That you have all this student information in the system. Some of you use this regularly. Some of you don't use this. Uh, but go ahead, Kate. Yeah. So I just pull this, um, and I, you know, I do an open filter. You can filter by uh, enrollment date. So if you want to just do last week or you know the last month, you can do that as well, and then export it to Excel. Um, that's going to look like this again. Uh, enable editing delete the top two lines, and then you can filter it. Um, it tells you the course type that they're in, so you can filter it by course type. It tells you their enrollment date. And keep in mind, if you're in a state like Minnesota, Minnesota has three courses. So you're gonna see three lines for that those courses. So you'll look over here, and then there's exam prep tools. So if your packages already have exam prep tools, <clears throat> maybe not the best person to reach out to for exam prep. So you can use that. It also tells you kind of their seat times and that kind of information. So if you're looking for people that have spent a lot of time in the course and maybe you're not getting through and don't have exam prep, that might be a great point of contact as well. So filter it by a couple different ways and it gives you a really clean list. Again, in the video, so again, oh, you're, go ahead. you're farming existing students who maybe aren't even done with the education, but do they need something else to help them get through? Do they need additional help, uh, another product that they can purchase? And you'll see everything that they're enrolled in in this enrollment report. So if they do not have an exam prep and they've been in this course for a long time and haven't completed, exam prep may be the perfect thing. To yeah, or especially if they failed one of their attempts in their final mm -hmm. exam, right? And you're not offering exam prep. Yeah, perfect, great. Okay. Exactly. So uh, turn it back over to Sarah uh, to finish up. 
Uh, yeah, just a couple quick hits, definitely exam prep, which you guys already talked about, and that's great. But the other thing you consider with your enrollment report is sending welcome emails um, and reminder and check in emails. So this is going to help your students just understand that you were there to support them um, and get them to that completion. So then you have those additional reports and opportunities beyond that um, to, to for, for cross sells and upsells. Um, so it's always a good idea to send a quick welcome email or just like a check in email or two throughout their course. Um, to keep them engaged. Right on, right on. And that's wow. it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> well, we're at the end. I don't know if you have questions. Uh, feel free to uh, put it in uh, the chat here. We'll leave this up for a couple, uh, for about another minute. And um, I know we've run to the end. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank Sarah Scobie and Kate Papke for all that you guys do for our organization. I want to thank all of our clients out there. Um, hopefully you got uh, some uh, solid information to go from there, at least some some big concepts for where you maybe are going to be organizing and where you're going to move your fishing boat to to fish. Go where the fish are. Spend your time and effort on where you know the fish are. That's uh, super important right now. Um, we see big things and bright things for 2024. Um, and make sure you're in the right position to take advantage of that. So thank you again, uh, everybody. Appreciate your time. And we'll be talking to you soon.